What up, y'all? Rap Critic here with the top five worst lyrics I heard this month. Let's get started. So, you know, when I started listening to Jack Harlow's new album, I, I had to say it actually sounded leagues ahead of the one he released last year. He stepped up his pin game and challenged himself with more diverse subject matter, and best of all, kept the Drake Loverboy copycatting to a minimum. So, when I hear a song start like this, My homeboy just be canceled. I'm thinking, okay, where's he going with this one? What's the journey this verse is going to take us on? But then this is the very next line. I call my ex no answer. Uh, what? As in that's my nickname for her, cause when I call no answer. Oh, you... You really fucking did that. You really pulled the most basic, I call someone blank because of a thing they do, but minus any actual joke or play on words about it. Just, just the objective statement that you saved your ex's name as no answer in your phone because she doesn't answer when you call. Just the most pathetic attempt at a clever line. And hey, did you know his nickname for his dentist is Dr. 40 Minutes Late? <laughs> now, now, I know it's a little complex, but but can you guess why? She know I'm a romancer. Yeah, no, I'm, I'm sure that's what's going through her head while she continues not answering your calls. And I'd say he's being ironic here, like, oh, he's not actually as cool as he says he is and he's aware of it, but the next lines are delivered with the conviction of someone who's clearly smelling themselves. No, I make you laugh like no one else. You love my banter. Oh yes, yeah, so with that nickname for his ex as just an example of the stellar witticisms in his back pocket. And the weirdest thing is, the hook of the song is supposed to be dedicated to all the independent women who don't need to boost their appearance for the satisfaction of any man. I like my girl natural, she only know I hands. But like, you would not have picked that up from the first couple of lines. Like, I'm sorry, but what was the relevance of the bit about cancer? My homeboy just beat cancer. Yeah, I, I'm not sure how that's supposed to play into the rest of the song. If anything, honestly, it just paints a really desperate sounding picture of you wheeling your friend straight from the hospital to the club to try to get some by proxy sympathy coochie. Hey, baby, let me introduce you to my friend. Now, <laughs> his name is Dan, but I call him Mr. Low White Blood Cell Count. So, whereas the previous song tried and failed at hyping up a sexy, confident woman, this classic 80s tune, the Roxette's She's Got the Look, actually excels at it. And when I heard it on the radio this past month, I was able to appreciate the creative way they got the point across that this woman is a powerhouse of feminine sexuality. The abstract imagery works so that every line makes clear emotional sense, even if it's not literal. Except for this line. Like, what? We, raindrops don't taste like anything. And, and this is clearly one of those lines that sounds cool to say, but, you know, everyone knows that rain just tastes like normal water, so it's like, what are we supposed to feel when we hear that line? Oh yeah, no taste to your delicacy than the distinct flavor of rain when a small bit of it hits your tongue really fast. D delicious. So everyone knows Common, right? The socially conscious rapper who's always got a deep, well-thought-out political message in his rhymes to really make you think about life. So when I see one of his songs entitled Chapter 13, Rich Man vs. Poor Man, I'm thinking, okay, what words of wisdom about power and wealth disparity does he have to share? So we get the setup of three different men in three different financial situations, which one could understand that how they got to those positions was likely informed by the history of how their race was treated in America. The black man, of course, he was poor. Yeah. The white man, he was rich. Uh -huh. And the Chinese man, he owned the stuff. And he mentions a few lyrics that make the white guy come off as pretty uncaring about the black guy's situation. Because the white man kept stepping on the black man's toes. Hey. Although, uh, I'm guessing he means that metaphorically. I mean, unless this white guy's like a complete sociopath just stomping on homeless people's feet or something. Every day the black man would ask for spare change. But Adam, the white man would stare straight. But even so, we get the allegory going on here, right? Every day, white people can tacitly observe the plight of beleaguered black folks, but because of either spite, ignorance, or incuriosity, the disparity. So the black man got fed up and took red by his neck and started beating him and beating him. Uh oh. The Chinese man got annoyed and broke out. W w what the hell is happening? Not a black man on the store. Wait, wait, what? In the name of it is Leon's. What's that? Barbecue, that is. I. What the fuck kind of story was that? The black dude, angry that he's homeless, beats up a white dude, and then a Chinese store owner who had nothing to do with this exchange runs for his life out of fear of being next, and then the black guy just manifests destiny as the Chinese dude's store? Well, well that's not fair. What the Chinese guy in the story do to deserve that? And what in God's name is the lesson supposed to be here? Look out when racial tensions happen because the oppressed minority might end up stealing the property of a third unrelated race? Well, I, I guess that is technically a lesson. 
So this is one of Raekwon the Chef's later singles, Hood, a dedication to the people and places on the poor side of the tracks and how much art and culture they've provided to the world. And I totally get it, a hometown pride for the underdogs that really keep the country going. But but then he says this line. Hood, look at your name, smell it back with your duck. That's what they yelling at And it's like, what? That, that's not what they're saying. That, that's not a thing anyone says. Smell it back with your duck. That's what they yelling at Like, I get it. it. It's hood backwards as a sound that's supposed to represent the emotional outburst of jealousy by the upper class over the fact that they can't be as cool as the poor people, but... That, that just is such a silly sound that no one makes. It sounds more like a bad voice AI failing to replicate Homer's catchphrase. Come on, you bot. The only way I'm going to be able to sell these Simpsons episodes is if the most important words come out right. So let's hear it. Damn it, Marge. Those black people who were forced to grow up in the filter by proxy so much cooler than me. Damn thing's defective. Bitch, holla. You need to put some polish on your toes. I'm trying to give my son some head while he want his own. Oh. Okay, okay, two things. One, this is a hopefully joking, but regardless, pretty gross reminder of the toxic hypermasculine ideals about getting laid as young as possible that some of us are still clearly forcing onto young boys. But two, if it is true, that's just an awful gift for a one year old. He's not gonna remember that. You're like the perverted version of any parent with a stroller at Disneyland. Like, fucking, what a waste of money. I'm just saying, if you're gonna spend money on something that's definitely gonna traumatize your child, wait until the kid can form some memories first. I, not that I condone it at all. You heard the first part, right? I, I made sure I said that. It's just that, just, man, it's kind of awkward to end on the this kind of subject matter. Uh, but, you know, worst lyrics video, so I gotta go in the evident order here. <laughs> Well, that's the episode. Leave a like if you like, because it helps. Comment if you have something to say, because it helps even more. And hit the subscribe and the bell, because that's what helps the most. And if you want to support the show, of course, that's ko-fi.com slash rapcritic for one-time donations, and patreon.com slash rapcritic for ongoing donations, where you can then see episodes early and join the RC Discord to chat with me and fellow fans. And until next time, I'm the Rap Critic. You don't have to care about lyrics, but, you know, they're, they're still there in the song, you know? Like, what do you want me to do? Not notice them? You know what I mean? I